13 billion years ago, there was nothing. Literally, nothing. No life, no sun, no energy, nothing. Until an incredibly dense object known as a singularity, under the pressure of its own weight, would explode, creating the universe as we know today. But it was very young and very active. Chaos was everywhere, the Dark Ages, as it was called. Meanwhile, in another galaxy we now call the Milky Way, was a solar nebula. A nebula is a large cloud of gas and dust that usually forms after the end of a large star's life. But death isn't the only thing that a nebula can be related to in terms of stars. The shockwave of a nearby supernova would eventually disturb the nebula, causing it to collapse in on itself. And at the very center of the nebula, it became so dense and hot that a new protostar was finished forming, that we now call our sun. The remaining debris became planets, but these planets aren't the ones that we know today, as, well, eventually, our solar system would have serious events that would lead to its construction. Eventually, our Earth would be born, and its history will proceed. Eventually, things would settle down, but drama would return, then disappear, and everything would calm down and became what we know today. Finally, the solar system would be stabilized, and here we are today. So, we have eight planets in our solar system as of now, but what if I told you that our solar system was proposed to have more than eight, but these planets would eventually be destroyed, ejected, or just simply disproven? And that's what we're talking about today. Join me, as together we are going to talk about the hypothetical planets of our solar system. Hypothetical planets are just that, by the name. Planets that are hypothesized to have existed or maybe still exist in our solar system. But do they? And what about the ones that existed? What happened to them? Well, let's go over a couple of these together. Starting with the most infamous of the hypotheticals, Planet Nine. Planet Nine refers to a planet located somewhere in the Oort Cloud an area around a light year from the Sun where comets mostly originate. Planet 9 is proposed to be an ice giant somewhat like that of Uranus and Neptune, with a mass around 5 to 10 times that of the Earth's. The idea behind Planet 9's existence is proposed to explain the gravitational stabilizations of the orbits of sedenoids, with Planet 9 acting as a gravitational leash to keep these objects from flying out of the solar system. 
Origins of Planet Nine remain a mystery, but the most possible theory is that it was another planet from a different star system that was captured by the gravitational pull of the Sun. Now, despite what the media might tell you, Planet Nine is not Planet X, and there's an understandable reason. Planet X was proposed in the mid-19th century by Percival Lowell. Planet X was proposed to be around 10 times the Earth's mass. However, Clyde Tombaugh would eventually take the record of discovering the object when he discovered Pluto in 1930. Pluto was believed to be around 10 times Earth's mass as it was the then Planet X. But of course, Pluto in reality was a lot smaller than what they have thought of. And in 2006, we all knew what happened. A decade after Pluto's demotion, Planet 9 would eventually be proposed in 2016 by more modern astronomers. And unlike Planet X, which was proposed to pull on the orbit of Neptune, as just like it did with Uranus leading to its mathematical discovery, Planet 9 would possibly explain the orbits of the Sednoids being stable, hence explaining why Planet X and Planet 9 are two different objects, with Planet X just being Pluto. But unlike Pluto, Planet 9 was never discovered. As more and more Sednoids were continuously being discovered, Planet 9 would eventually likely be disproven and, most likely, will never be found in the future. But Planet Nine is not the only far-off solar system body that would eventually be written out. There's Planet Ten, which was proposed to be the explanation behind an area known as the Kuiper Cliff, and was proposed to be a terrestrial planet around the mass of Earth or Mars. There is also Tyche, a super-Jupiter around four times the mass of Jupiter within the Oort Cloud, which would possibly explain the unusual patterns in the orbits of some comets that would occasionally move towards the inner solar system. But despite it being named after the goddess of luck, in 2014, it would be disproven. There is also a hypothetical star, Nemesis, which was theorized to explain the periodic extinction events on Earth, and also the destabilization of outer solar system objects just like Tyche. But like Tyche, it too would be disproven. Vulcan was theorized to be a small planet and the source behind Mercury's odd orbit via its gravitational influence on Mercury. But thanks to Einstein's theory of general relativity, Vulcan would eventually be disproven. And Tichthon, or commonly known as Counter-Earth, which simply orbited on the other side of the Sun from Earth, Phaethon was believed to be the planet behind the asteroid belt's formation from its destruction. But of course, that theory is outdated, and we now know that the asteroid belt is just simply leftovers from the solar system's formation and Planet 5, Roman numeral 5, which would in simulations be depicted to have a heavily destabilized orbit within the inner solar system, which would explain the asteroid belt's current density via the late heavy bombardment in the inner solar system, and in the end would either collide with Mars or the Sun, or be ejected from the system altogether. However, most of these simulations were unsuccessful, and that such an event would be highly unlikely, Planet 5 would also be disproven. This finally brings us to what you've probably been waiting for the past hypothetical planets. For now, we will only be discussing two of them. Sometime after an incident called the Grand Tack, which was an incident where Jupiter destroyed first-generation rocky planets during an intermigration, resulting in the formation of the rocky planets we know today, including the Earth, our solar system at one point had an additional gas giant. This object does not have a name, but was proposed in the year 2011 by David Nesvorny in a model dubbed the Jumping Jupiter or Five Planet Nis model, which would explain the origins of the orbits of the outer solar system and the massive gap between Saturn and Uranus. Due to destabilizations, the fifth giant would be ejected from the solar system entirely. Neptune simply migrated outward, leading up to a few things. 
leading to Uranus and Neptune swapping places. Neptune capturing its largest moon, Triton. and the late heavy bombardment. And finally, the last hypothetical, Theia. Theia was a terrestrial planet around the size of Mars. Just like the remaining inner solar system members, it too also formed from the Grand Tack. In mythology, Theia was a titan who gave birth to the moon goddess, Selene. Theia would collide with the Earth around 4.5 billion years ago. The debris from the impact would release a large ring of molten rock around the Earth. This ring would eventually coalesce via gravity and form the Moon. The force of the impact may have also resulted in the Earth's current tilt, magnetic field, and its rotation. Some even speculate that Theia could also have provided water to the Earth, as it was theorized to have probably formed within the outer solar system. There are many more planets believed to have existed within our solar system or have been disproven. In fact, a lot more than the ones I spoke about for this video. So, with all said and done, we will now end our journey, once and for all, of our tour of the solar system. Hey guys, I'm up. Well, how'd you sleep? I slept okay. I feel a little better after what happened. Well, good news. We already passed the orbit of Mars, so we should be almost home. Well, great. I'm happy we're finally going back home. But, I can't help just by feeling something. What's that? Throughout my life, I've always made things by myself alone, and for a long time. And while it's great to have people like you in my life, I'm just... I just don't know about things because I just don't feel perfect sometimes. 
and I even think we didn't really have that great of a time out here. Oh, well, I'm really sorry that I got some of us into danger. I was only trying to have fun, but I didn't know it would be this bad. It's not just that, Rill. It's also that... I don't know if it's just me or if I really did make a bad idea at all. I finished something, but at what cost? I just feel exhausted and tired, and I don't know what to do now. Kelly, listen, I understand that you felt unhappy about all this, but in the end, we've made it out unharmed, mostly. But you did your best to keep what you made alive, and that exhaustion will all be worth it. And don't worry if it took this long for us to help you out on it. We did the best to help you out, and honestly, it was a pleasure and honor to work with you as a whole. Exactly. We're your friends. Just remember, even if things haven't been so great, at least you got to be thankful that we're here to help you out. Huh. I didn't really think of it like that way, but... Thank you all so much. And if you guys really think it was all worth it, then who am I really to judge? Thanks, Kelly. We love you as a best friend. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You guys are really grateful. No problem, PJ. In the end, I am very grateful that I have friends who I love and who also help me with working on what I love. And in the end, even if things aren't as always as bright as I thought it would be, it would still be all worth it in the very end. And I will forever be grateful for everyone I love dearly. This has been a pretty wild journey for me. And lastly, thank you all very much for traveling with me on this journey. Goodbye, everyone.